Sarah Cox, the perfect person for the job, vastly experienced. She is joined by two Americans in the sidelines and Andrew McNamee, the Scotsman, in the TMO booth. Canada in their traditional red, playing from left to right. They will want to carry, and they'll want to carry heavy. Their forward platform is a big part of their game. Equally, New Zealand do not back away from the challenge. You hear a lot from that woman, Justine Peltier. She is the little general that runs things. First, they get better. Great step. The dancing feet. If I pull out, she's going for the line. She's just ankle tap. She could have reached out and scored, but she outloads. Does she get the ball down over the line? There's Demant. She's held up short. New Zealand threatening right off the bat in the opening minute. Shipping it wide is Marina Talino. Nice tackle there in the midfield from Calgary. The prop rule, just five meters out. Over the line, reaching out, held up on her back. Not able to roll over, Sarah Cox can't get a view. And she's given the try. Sarah Cox had to dig her way in. Not sure it was, it love that rolled over there. Explosive start from New Zealand, silencing the Canadian crowd. Not the start, that was the clearance kick attempt. It didn't go far and there was only a single Canadian chaser on that play, so a clear run at the line. Bahakolo almost scored off that right away, but it was the forwards that went to work. Canadian desperate in defense, holding them up short a few times, but in the end, too much power from the Black Ferns to start this match off. So from that view, Sarah Cox is awarded the try. Maybe some questions from the Canadian camp, but it's not going to matter now as the extras are added. 7 0. Just two minutes into this one, the world champions are showing why they are such. Chelsea Bremner, the older sister, gets that one down. Just check that. Luca Connor, the hooker, got the try. My mistake. And it will be Calgary to restart. So frantic start here. Battled again, and it's going to be a knock-on scrum to Canada. And the crowd quickly back in it. But Canada will just want to forget about that first minute and get back into it like it's still 0-0. And this scrum attacking opportunity is in a great spot. Right side of the field, about 20, height, 30 meters height out. And weight. First scrum, this will be somewhere Canada may look to find an advantage. Crouch. For New Zealand, Kit Love and Amy Rule anchoring with Luke O'Connor in the middle. And for Canada, the merchant Tatusi, who is so impactful. Right, and Menon. Both Tatusi and Menon have there come off right. English, English finals appearances with Exeter Chiefs. They lost the, that match, but both played incredibly well. Said Sarah Cox is assisted by two Americans, Amelia Luciano and Jennifer Lewis. Andrew McNamee Set. in the TMO booth. He wasn't used on that last try, and Canadian coach Kevin Lee may say, why not? Free kick to Canada. Is that connect? Now they're going to go quickly. The, goodie, the captain has that right. Quick break from Shell. She offloads. Tyson Bukaboom. She's a heavy ball carrier. Great skills on it. Juby sat down. No right, no right, out. This is better from Canada, putting a few phases together. Shaw hits it flat. Forteza with the break. Fabiola Forteza going for the line. Does she get it down? Sarah Cox says no immediately, held out. The crowd disagreed, obviously, but Fabiola Forteza went for it. Fabiola Fortez has such an impact for this Canadian team. It's a beautiful line. She goes right through untouched. And has two more defenders to beat, which is a credit to the New, New, New Zealand defense. 
and goes for the dive, but just held up in the end. So that leads to a goal line dropout. New Zealand will kick it from under their post. Shell running, but she's used the blocker there. There's going to be a penalty. New Zealand looking to go quickly, but they're going to settle things down. What great defensive work from New Zealand to get under that ball. It would have been the perfect response from Canada, but I love the energy that they've come back with. Stop black they're running, the they're attacking, they're finding gaps already. And the call was crossing, which is an unfortunate call. With a few yep. teammates ahead of her. Some consistency from Cox. So she didn't use the TMO and she had an immediate call, just as she did on New Zealand's try. Step over. She wasn't particularly clear from the angle we got. And there's Luke O'Connor. Line out set piece. Movement. No compete from Canada. Midfield hit up. Lots of options for the ball carrier. Again, his brunt was looking to offload. I had it, it from an offside on. position, then moved into that in front, okay? Questions asked whether she was offside, but frantic start here. Just then. And it's a good re good result off this line out. The New Zealand backs last week were absolutely lethal through the middle, creating so many opportunities. So the Canadian defense came up well. They came up together, creating the turnover. Church! Bind! Set! Justine Peltier for Canada defeating the bat scrum. They hold. It's a goodie. Use Works the ball. it a little bit left. She referee wants her to use it as she does. Goes to Peltier. That one's knocked on in the tackle. Referee said it play on. And she's going to take the Canadian knock on. Moving off the shoulder. Stay bound. I spoke with Sophie DeGoody this week and she mentioned how important the front row is going to be and the battle there against a larger pack against New Zealand. But. The Canadian front row, Olivia DeMerchant, Emily Totosi, Delika Menon are going to be a key part of this Canadian Trash. performance today. We're already at three scrums in the first seven Bind. minutes. Set! Ready, 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 now! No. Solid platform from New Zealand. Shift away, Irina Kalina. Again, more good contact, and the Canadian crowd liked it, but there's hands in the rut. Canada will be penalized. Great shot from Fancy Bermudez. Starting to make a name for herself is a sevens player. But has scored a few tries and she is not gonna back down from contact or tackles against these Blackburns. Zealand will kick the touch off the penalty and they will regain possession because it was a penalty if it goes out. It hasn't gone out. Good effort from Flo Simons. That's her first touch. Here's the penalty. Canada thought they could look get at the, hands in there. Look at the shot from Fancy. Gets low, gets in her way. And unlucky there because Fancy's doing everything right, she can to get out. And you're gonna stay on your but mark. her feet were still tangled up. You guys up. are going to get numbers and come in quicker, please. Six, six. So you can hear Sarah Cox. My official is obviously mic'd up, laying on the law. You could kind of get in that try. Get up. New Zealand looking to drive through the forwards and there Canada's going to be penalized. Coming in entry. the side, side entry. Interesting decision here you for Demant. Yeah, she's going to have a shot at goal. Doesn't want to get too caught up in the frenzy here. They're up 7-0. This is very kickable indeed. Yeah, there is a clock here, and those of you new to this, the penalty shot clock. So, 60 seconds after the penalty's been awarded, the kicker has to complete their kick. It's 90 seconds off the try. And A. Holmes has uh, got about 30. As you mentioned, this is Holmes. She's been working on her long-range kicking, I'm told. So Canada's going to have to be disciplined and not give up too many opportunities to give these penalty kicks. 
Coming up to 10 minutes played. Renee Holmes. She's pushed it across the face. So repeat for Canada. Wait, and they're wait, gonna stop, run it out stop. with a wayward kick. A strange decision. It's gonna get possession right back to New Zealand. Off right. The Korean crowd liking that Amy Duplessis was wrapped up. It's so organized are the Black Firm team. There's the show and go from Sylvia Brunt. Yes. Knocked on in the end. Just lost it forward and then you move the back again. Just knock on. And watch for her, number 12, Sylvia Brunt. She was the player of the match last week. She created havoc against Australia. But look at the shot from Juby. Sarah Cal Juby, textbook tackle, gets her shoulder and keeps her legs alive. Always looking to offload. Legongo Ipoloto, Le Mapu Atai Brunt. Sylvia to us for the rest of this game, we hope. Just knock that one on. Bind! Set! has a little look over at her opposite number. The goodie pops up. They're gonna ship it and use the right boot. They go long and low on this field turf field here in Ottawa. It's an artificial pitch. It's very, very hot for the earlier match, Australia and the USA. Things have cooled off considerably. 7 p.m. was kickoff time here. That's your second attempt. Another Hands penalty against Canada for a second attempt. Sarah Cox having no time for Canada going after the steal. And looks Mine's like maybe Peltier's in a bit of trouble here. Hands in the rack. Should get some treatment. And Demant just going to keep it going here, going for territory. But Canada's going to have to be careful around these breakdowns. Clean it up a little bit. Giving New Zealand an option for points or territory is going to creep up on them. The initial defensive effort was good. The inside cover from Justine Peltier. Look at that. The number nine on the number six quite a size difference but she does well and then just can't get herself out well the second player goes for the turnover the attitude's great but you gotta wait till that first tackler gets out of there to take a shot at the turnover well Justine Peltier took a shot to the face there from the knee but she's been assessed she's back on the field the pride of Quebec Canada needs her she's been named vice captain to this team now and that's a credit to her attitude, her leadership, and her performance over the last couple of years within this team. She's come up a victory in the French Cup final for Stade Bordelais. That one's stolen. Sophie Goody and her pod get up in front of that long throw. They choose not to use the big forwards. They're using Shell's right boot. Not a lot of return on that, as it will be a New Zealand lineup. On you. Oh, sorry, sorry. Forteza was so close to getting Canada right back into this match. Incredibly dynamic player. A little bit of noise from the crowd means the call has to come in from Love to Connor. Forwards arrive, they simplify it, and this time more effective. They form up. They're driving. They've got 10 meters to go. The Canadian line beckons. Break it away. Breakout. It's a tackle now, it's right. By the vice captain, Simon, but she can't get there. Low carry. No, don't touch, Chandway. Kolani, Rus. Mikaeli Tua gets over the five meter line. And it's recycled. Hip love. Spills it back, but play on. And some big hits midfield. Kaljavi's been at the center of a lot of them. One of the question marks coming in was some of the players have been playing a lot of sevens. Could they convert and set the defensive lines? That's Kaljavi, Bermudez, and Simons. Taco! Five meters still for New Zealand to go. That's tipped on. Canada's up to it for the moment, knocking them back. Half gap, it's a full gap. And dancing through the hole, Ruae Demont. Outstanding work. The World Rugby Player of the Year 
just showing pure class there and getting New Zealand's second try. Canada really struggling on these exits, so New Zealand getting opportunities to attack from within the 22. In the end, Demant just has a clean run through there. Right through the gap, Delika Menon can't get enough on her to take her down. But Canada needs to sort out these exits. The kicks, if that's the option, need to be moved around the field a little bit more. Or start looking at keeping the ball in hand because they look good with ball in hand right now. The great awareness from DeMant, recognized he was up against the prop and just stepped her, set her up, and got in behind. So as Holmes adds the extras, that's 14 points to nil. The world champions, New Zealand, up over Canada. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, I just wonder, there's been so much going on off the field, which is fantastic, but I wonder if there's been an element of distraction for this Canadian team. It's always a factor playing at home, you know, there's demands, there's community events, there's family, there's friends, but this team is motivated, and I don't think it's been a distraction for them. I think it really has motivated them. They just need to settle into this game. Sarah Caljuvi playing with a heavy heart. There's a nice kick in deep. Canada putting the pressure on, getting downfield well. It was sent. But New Zealand, no panic from them. And again, the half break. No, 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 Demant no, looking no, for the no, offload. There was no one there this time. Caljuvi takes away the midfield and then makes the tackle. Zealand getting good support over the ball carrier. Oh, there's a high shot from Gabrielle Sant. Referee's letting play go on. Oh, now the arm's out. Now she's got a little word in from her assistant official, I think. Oh, and a nice big hit midfield from Bukaboom. Oh, there's a push off the ball. Bukaboom getting in under the skin of the New Zealand players. Jason Bukaboom. Just like her name suggests, loves to get into the tackle. We should explain that comment. The Bukaboom family, very famous in ice hockey circles up here, and uh, definitely um, get under people's skins when they play that game. A great sporting family from Ontario. She's also earned herself. She's the second most all-time capped Canadian rugby player on the women's side. Look at the shot, yeah, the back. experience. She knows She's how to get into these games, and she knows how to compete even in the one-on-one -on -one little battles like that big tackle. This is the great couch in rugby club. She's one of her clubs. Maybe looking to go to Europe and keep eyes on that. She's got several of the Canadian women. Well, pass out the back row is really well read by Forteza. And the towel now. Not manual, just trying to settle things down. Now they're trying to disrupt. Now they're going to go to the, the little chip shot. We've had some funny bounces on this turf already. Oh, beautifully gathered and still going. Still in open field, Amy Duplessy. The center pair and connect, and finally it's going to be a run-in for Mini Lani Paul. Explosive breakout from the New Zealand Black Ferns for their third try. No, no. There's more. It was the chip off the open play. Canadian defense is coming up hard. New Zealand recognizes there's a little opportunity in behind before the fullback can get to it. And Amy Duplessis collects, but look at the support line. She's got four players outside of her. Canadians desperate to chase. But Meriangi Paul, in the end, doesn't have to do much, but well earned, well worked. Nah, good, she you. got two tries against Australia last week. She's resumed. Too late, too late. <laughs> Just textbook linking up the center pairing, the loose forward, and then the finishing winger. That's how you can right, attack. We work from Brunt to keep that play alive as well. And Simon involved. Well, a dream start for the New Zealand side as we're coming up to 20 minutes played. 
Meriangi Paul, she came from netball, as we've seen from a few of the nations that play netball. A great so. crossover sport to rugby, and she's really finding her way in just her second cap. Debuted last weekend against Australia and looks very comfortable on the field. Big hit, but a great take from Kennedy Simon. Balls out, so Pelte did well to tie it up, but New Zealand regroups. Just constantly asking questions are the Black Ferns. And they've won the penalty. You've got to get out, you stopped clearance. Very quick on the whistle again. And that was Courtney Holkamp this time, not getting out quickly enough. Canada getting called for the same penalty here over and over. The tackler too slow to get out or not getting out while someone goes for the turnover and that's you, six not, penalties not in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, no problems. New Zealand Stop controlling off. the pace. There's a, a plot Stop down. Off. You're the line though, okay. Rules just getting some attention. Right, this, this penalty count. Yeah. Sophie going to have a little chat with the referee. Let's listen in. change it now, okay? You will be on the line. You will be on the line. In true Canadian fashion, <laughs> Sophie DeGoody apologizing for her penalty. It would be a good opportunity for them to just have a little word with each other, connect on these penalties. This New Zealand look, the new era of the New Zealand rugby. Alan Bunting, a very southern influence of the Chiefs in the team. And keep and in mind, keep in mind too, Kendra Coxedge has what? retired. Yeah. Some of the breakthrough players from the Sevens aren't here. And still the New Zealand team is looking as good as they are at the moment. And it's a credit to how much rugby these athletes play as kids how ingrained it is in their culture, and that's something Canada is trying to continue to build, but you can see the impact that it has. Yeah, the Super Rugby OPK is the envy of Canada right now. They're Perfect. trying to build it. conversations on. with World Rugby, Summer. how they can build competition in North America so the players don't have to leave. No, no. Great to see that competition. Okay. Right. Let's get in and get set, New Zealand please. and going. We okay. understand even greater Let's next year. Let's not up and down. We've got the mark here. Not too wide. In you come. Thank you. Sarah Crox from England. Again, New Zealand, Canada steal the ball, but immediately pounced on by Chelsea Bremner. 14th cap here. Again, Canada missing first up tackles. It's going to be costly. On the ball, you get a two up. Still going, still driving. Kicked out. Kicked, Kicked out, out the side. Right from the rock. Old camp jumps on it. And now a counterattack option. Minin is met. Belty is directing traffic. They're going to go to the boot again. Through Julia Shell. And she finds touch. Well, Fabiola Forteza, her second lineout steal of the match. And if Canada can just hold on to those turnovers, it's a great steal, it's a great opportunity. And New Zealand getting it back. Six, five. Numbers, please. Today. Today. Numbers. Well, Canada this is your encouraging final them. You take time like this again, I will free kick you. There in we go. That now. scene was planted by the Canadian players saying, today, let's get it in. And it's the third time Sarah Cox has asked them to do so. First touch there. Off the line out for Paul. No, out. Short ball. Brent hits up hard. So impressive is this 19 year old. Strong carry there from Pip Love. The front row completely changed out. Ponsonby Henwood 
Tyler Navalli were up against Australia. Complete change for this week's game against Canada. Sorry, Alana Bremner. No, no, nice no, 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 Well, this is comprehensive at the moment. Yeah, of course. And they're going to choose a scrum. And in that is a statement. They're up 21 0. And they're saying, we're going to keep the pressure on. We're not going to take an easy three here. Yeah, the way the game's been going, they're feeling confident. They've got a great set piece here. And a center scrum is a dream for the backs. Any option and every option is on right now. Completely split. Two out right, four set to the back. Well, the last time these two teams played, it was 28-0. But it was 6-0 at the half. Canada very much in it. Bunch. The opposite story here. Let's see if they can hold out with a midfield scrum. Set. Attacking options both sides. Oh, for Marina Tawino. They go behind to the try score. Nice tackle there from Bermudez. She did really well, and she's won the penalty. New Zealand this time arriving off their feet. Once again, Fancy Bermuda is with the big tackle. New Zealand tried some misdirection, but Canada held strong, held their space. Fancy, a product of the Norwester Club in Edmonton, and perhaps no greater club has given more to the women's game in Canada. Like you were going to ask me a question. The third cap, he played really well and has trained really well for now, Coach right? Kevin Rue in Spain against USA April. She did exceptionally well. To the front, a bit of trickery. That was the scrum half in there. Okay, trying to stay on the park. Great shot from our team. There's Sophie DeGoody with her first meaningful carry of the match. When she goes forward, Canada goes forward. This is a bit more on brand for Canada. Courtney Holtkamp smashing it up. Inside ball to Degutti. She keeps her feet. Now Peltier goes wide. There's the tip. Doesn't go to hand. It's off a leg, but immediately scooped up from Amy Duplessis. Great awareness from her. Now Cannon's got it back. Caljuni passes it out. Menem kicks it wide. Degutti spinning, running. Let's go, Canada. Let's go, Canada ringing out. Tries to go at the back door. Doesn't go to hand. Oh, hands on it. Exceptional work there from Chelsea Bremner. Ah! Both sides guilty of spilling the ball. The ball's been in play for some time here. 26 minutes played here in Ottawa. This is the fourth game of the 2023 half four competition. Bermuda's tackles without the ball. I think she was trying to pick it up. Referee says it's okay. The match hits it wide. New Zealand have gone backwards, but have done well to regroup. There's a nice little tip pass. And again, another penalty. New Zealand not releasing this time. It looks like Nikki Aritua may be in some discomfort. The tackles coming in from Canada might be taking a little bit of a toll. They are up for this in the tackle department and Canada getting themselves down the field for the first time in this game. Yeah, and ill discipline for both teams, but Canada suffering mostly with those seven penalties. Only 27 minutes into the half and New Zealand now with a couple. As Kip Love gets a little bit of treatment. She debuted against Canada way back in 2014, the veteran. Yeah, I thought she touched it, yeah. Okay, And she missed the 2018 Rugby World Cup. The PE teacher from Otago will know what to do with this sore ankle. There is her career. Business time when they tape outside the boot, an ankle spat there. A few words for Chelsea Bremner. Bremner 
course, a massive line-out presence. Only Chitosi normally very apparent in the field. has been relatively quiet here. LGB. Tote goes back to the short side. Again, the pass is not going to hand. Tate does well to pull back. No, leave not black. Tate, half count. Offload back inside to Dimension. You know, ball off feet. Off feet, leave it. Again, there's hands on it. The referee's letting him go. Lots of offloads to Goody. A little bit isolated for the moment, and I think that's cost her, and it's cost Canada penalized. Yeah, you could see she was looking for the offload there, brought the ball in, tried to tuck it under, but there was no runner, and that left her isolated. New Zealand go quickly on the tap, perhaps sensing Canada was a little bit frustrated with their turnovers. Well, nice pick up there, the low pass. The show and then realizing nothing was on, had the discipline to take it up, reset. And they're getting off the line fairly well. That one's straight forward, and Canada can have a go here. Maybe a chip and chase. Belte looks at the short side. The goodies in space, and she can kick. Yep. Nice. Multi talented no, athlete there. showing her skills there as the goodie thought she may be able to get that one over the top. And it's Justine Peltier with Sophie. The option was there. She just needed another meter or two earlier to get that kick away. Luckily, she's back on her feet. Sophie the Goody spent some time in London with the Saracens. Also involved with Canada's sevens team. We'll be back for the Olympic qualifiers, the Rugby America's North qualifiers in Langford in August. Fines! Selected is available for all sevens campaign. Looking to book a place in Paris. The ball pops up the side. The goodie does get it away. A nice wide floated pass. Again, pretty complicated stuff midfield for Canada. As Flo Simons is brought down, but it created something eventually. Doesn't quite go to hand. Takes Ferries with her first touch. Canada looking a little bit. Disorganized for the moment. This is better. Nene. The pride of Vulcan, Alberta. Hey, it's lost. Ukebun gives it inside to her second row partner. Ocant gives it back to Marchand. All back. All back. All's gone backward in all of these drops. Tutosi stays down, it's still, and it's been stolen by Demant. It's a smart play. Well, both sides trying to play. And there's Francis Ramirez. Just get the mark for me, mate. Well, this Canadian side are really Letting the ball go, they're playing. I don't know if they've actually set up the right to go out the back. They haven't hit up enough. There's a high tackle. Old camp who's been really busy here. The extra John Terry, sorry, the Rimby Alberta Naval. Hi. Real dear Titans to be proud of her effort here in the opening 30 minutes. As you mentioned, mentioned Canada trying to move the ball. They're looking for that under deep option. But they haven't necessarily frozen the defenders in the middle to, to get around. But they are really starting to move the ball, starting to get a little bit expansive. Yeah, no worries, mate. Thank you. And there's the big hit. That one goes up, bit of a seatbelt tackle. No tolerance for that. No real bad intent from Maya Kulana Urus. Okay, okay. All right. I understand. Okay, okay. Head girl at the Taranaki College, so she should know better than that. Okay. So Good off. young player that everyone's looking forward oh, to seeing. Oh, no, turn off. Great engine. No, the medic's here. No, it's okay. Give it a second. Promising World Cup as well. Okay, turn on. Tosi.
There's a drive, finally kind of set up, but they pull out immediately. Looked like they were maybe on the move. This time they carry through the middle. Setting things up for later. Bukabun, one of the best ball players in the team, gets around the corner there. Peltier still coming. She's rocked at the base. Now the little tap for Courtney Holcamp just go on. Let's go. Hits her in the midfield. The nerd shot sprinting into the New Zealand 22. But brought down from behind by Maya Roos. This is better from Canada. Their best phase of play. The captain takes it up. The vice captain ships it wide. Beltier. It's Menard who tips it to Bukaboo. On her back. But the referee's going to come back. An original penalty of the New Zealand not rolling away. Quick tap from DeGuddy. Five meters out. Big collision. She gets it down. Sophie DeGuddy on the board for Canada. Well, there it is. They've been building, working themselves down the field, and it's the captain, Sophie DeGuddy. Quick off that penalty. Canada penalized for the same call numerous times, and then New Zealand, they punished them for the call. Sophie pushes the tempo, let's go, and works herself oh. through four defenders. Well, not for the faint heart. It's sometimes nice when you're the captain, you can back yourself to make that decision. What a hit. I think it's Kennedy Simon, the opposing captain, who took that one, and the goodie's got to make the kick here. of Victoria, castaway wanderer. Luffy stopped her here because of the injury. Okay, Luffy's just clear getting a word in her ear. So unless you've got an angle that clearly shows that separation. Right, there's some question whether she got the ball down, and they'd have to clearly show that she didn't have contact with the ball. The goodie's not <laughs> offering any advice. <laughs> so. It's interesting she hasn't gone. Oh, she's going to have a look. So, Sarah Cox is not having a look. She's let Sophie DeGuddy take the kick. DeGuddy doesn't go through her full routine, which is maybe a mistake, but it goes through. A full seven pointer. Such a talent, Sophie DeGuddy. And that's the perfect example. Smashes her way through four defenders and then gets up and takes the conversion amidst the distraction in the holdups. Well, an important score, I think, just mentally, if nothing else, and also bringing this crowd, this home crowd here in Ottawa, back into the game. Five minutes to play in the first half here. The Black Ferns up against Canada. Wukaboom gathers the kickoff, brought down immediately. Well, there was that lady, Olivia the Merchant, in her 55th cap, the pride of Mapledale, New Brunswick. Who got the initial break that got Canada that try. Well, this is much better. Canada's starting to win a few collisions and get some go forward. Belty slices across the front of the New Zealand defense. It's a goodie. That's an on for her. Sure. And I like the option playing out of there. They didn't go to the kick, and they've got themselves to the 40. Well, yeah, wonderful messages got on the field from Kevin Ruay and Jack Hanrahi, the Canadian coaches. Maybe put the boot away for a while and see if you can force New Zealand to defend for a period. Kyle Juvie attracts three black jerseys. Four minutes to play here. Again, DeGuddy cleaning up the mishandling. There's a Good hand team. in there. There we go back. There's no advantage. You're always going backwards. So there's a high tackle. We're going to go back for that. Canada didn't gain the advantage. Just high on the way down. If you're new to rugby, that the referee sees an infraction, they can play on. And if the team who doesn't offend gets an advantage, they can have it. But nothing came there. So a much better last five, seven minutes of play from Canada is just then. Absolutely. There's Julia Shell. She's looking to get them down the field now into the New Zealand half. But I do think if Canada keeps the ball in hand, they look dangerous. They're starting to put together some phases. 
forcing New Zealand to tackle rather than just kicking the ball back and giving New Zealand ample opportunity to play freely. Yes, thumbs off. We've got time off. It looks like Luke O'Connor was getting some treatment behind the play, and she's actually left the field. So on comes last week's hooker, Georgia Ponsonby. No slouch as a replacement. That is New Zealand's quality. But Canada driving now, keeping it in. We saw a lot of this at the World Cup from them. And it was effective against the Americans in the first Pac-4 game. We've regrouped. I actually thought we'd see a lot more of this just then, but they've waited until 37 minutes in. The goodie's got her hands on it. They're on the New Zealand 22, and they're still going. Same mall, says the referee. So New Zealand can't tackle this. It's been shipped on to Tyson Bukaboom. And they've got open. They're play. open. Bukaboom's away. The short pass to Forteza. Can she get it down this time? Yes, she does. Outstanding response from the Canadian forwards to put him right back in this match. And the entire team comes in to celebrate. They march that mall down 40 meters, and then Fabiola Forteza who's already had so much impact, is the one to finish it with the big run. She almost had one earlier, and there she is, Tyson setting her up beautifully on the inside. But that is a forward stride through and through. The work at the mall continuing to roll and move and work against the New Zealand no, no, defenders. So DeGuddy, who was putting in it, all that work, now has only a minute to kick the conversion as well. New Zealand regrouping under the post, both physically and I'm sure mentally. They seem to be in total control of this match. Remember, they turned down that three in front of the post. It's really given them a 24 nil advantage. They're now only up nine with this conversion to come. Make that seven. One try the difference here in Ottawa as Canada claw their way back against the world champions. combination of Fabiola Forteza, Sophie de Goody. They are all over the field on attack and defense, and the two of them are having a big impact so far. We're talking to Coach Kevin Murray. Her description of Forteza is dynamic and competitive, both on display here. Inside. And they're going to kick long. A nice kick there from Shout. With less than a minute to play. New Zealand right at halfway. Oh, really, a half of two halves. New Zealand dominating for the first 30 minutes. Canada responding with two tries. And New Zealand are, are set out of this line out again. Sarah Cox warned them before, but letting them do it again here. In five. Canada compete again, but can't steal this one. So New Zealand a chance to respond right at the end of the half. Great teams do this. See what they can conjure up. Thanks, mate. Chelsea Bremner takes it into contact. She spilled it. Jatosi flips it out wide. And the crowd knows what they'd like to see. It goes wide. Referee said advantage over. I don't know how. Maybe because it was a knock on. Crawling forward is Paige no, Ferris. Black. You weren't on the ball. So. Canada have improved that. Passing game, the first and second receiver. Ball's going to hand a bit more consistently. Stop and go from Flo Simons. University of oh British Columbia gosh. product. Seven standout. But he's wrapped up, so she wisely goes to ground. We're in the red numbers here, so Canada could kick it off the park. Or they can keep playing as they've done here. Oh, it just doesn't bounce kindly. For Paige Ferries. She knows it. But what a great first half of rugby. New Zealand came out of the gates dominating up 21 points. But Canada responded with a quick 14. Here in Ottawa, it's New Zealand 21, Canada 14. There we go. Second half about to start. Canada's Sarah Kaljuvi gets us underway. New Zealand, Black Ferns, the world champions. Currently up by a try. We have 40 minutes of rugby left here in the fourth game of 
The Pacific Floor Championship, the winner of this, will take the top of the table. Black Holes, put their hands very firmly on a qualifying position in WXV to take place in November. The World Rugby New Championship with the top six teams in the world down in New Zealand. And that's a nice kick. Found some space behind the winger. The full back out in the middle of the field. So a little bit of niggle at the front of the line out between Pip Love and Totosi. Just wonder if maybe New Zealand took their foot off the gas a little bit, cut off a couple of tackles. There we go. Here's the drive I thought we might see the Canadian forwards. Such a big part of their success at the Rugby World Cup last year. Now they're crowding across field. Well, I would say clear message from head coach Kevin Rue. Why don't we try this? Peltier looking for the short side. Could have gone earlier. Big Ferris has to stop and start. You've lost it, Black. Hands off call for Black. It's moved away. A positive start for the Canadians, although a great tackle from Mikel Itou. That ball's loose. Totosi. The tackle's coming in. Sylvia Brunt doing her job there. With the boom on the ball yet again. Shell is hit. Player in the ball by the substitute on the field. Substitute hooker Georgia Ponsonby. They lost Luca Connor early on. She scored a try but then had to leave the field. You're just joining us. Canada have got numbers out right here if they move it. Needed to be tipped, but Calgary doesn't take the risk. Hans <laughs> Bermudez, oh, she's hit solidly across the chest of the referee. Fair tackle. Zoom that? players caught in there. Maya Roos. Again, bit of a no look pass, and it's spilled loose. The kick and chase from Amy Duplessis. Uh, Sabrina Poulain does so well. The player from St. George, Quebec, was recently in the HSBC Dream Team in Toulouse in the World 7 Series. Doesn't have way. much space do here. Again. Gabriel Sent looking for the handoff. Yes, please. So New Zealand are really committed in defense right here. Who could be? Okay, so nice tackle from Stand Kennedy down. Simon, sure captain. Yes, please, Reds! It's slow ball now. They're going to extend the no, run, so they'll take and put a boot in. And they go to the box oh, kick. Not too high. So really free ball from New Zealand to build their attack. Mateza keeping an eye on that. Keeping it alive well is Paul. She got one try early on. Three tries for New Zealand in that first half. Nice flat pass to Duplessis. Ball's out. Chelsea Bremner. Oh, the show and go, and finally the offload to Amy Rule. Canada coming up too quickly, leaving a hole. They've exploited it. Amy Duplessis in the gap, over the line. Amy Duplessis gets New Zealand's fourth try and the bonus point. Well, she's been putting the pressure on the Canadian team with her chase and her work off the ball and earns herself a try on this one. The defense in a bit of a panic. Players still trying to get back. And a simple two-on-one to put her over. Aridiana Marina Toino got the work done. She saw that the Canadians became disconnected on the fringe there. And she took the inside gap and set up Amy Duplessis. Great work. And extras added. From Renee Holmes, so New Zealand in the first five minutes silence this Canadian crowd and have a chance to celebrate.
Duplessis, the South African born player who came to New Zealand as a kid. Finally able to come over and support the World Cup campaign last year. Moves to Invercargill from South Africa. Oh, strong carry from Sylvia Brunt again, sitting down. I think Canada won't want to be kicking that ball away, giving this clean possession to New Zealand. There's the half cap. Demac creating again. Oh, the pass doesn't quite go to hand. There's a smile because she knew she was away if that one stuck. Rue Demant, remarkable vision, attacking the line and getting the break. It's a nice breakthrough. And New Zealand were well and away unlucky not to finish this one. <laughs> she had nobody in front of her. Ended up benefit there. So Canada line out. A few fresh legs on there for New Zealand. Kate Henwood's on for Philip Pippelov. Say more. And Always Rita bad. Is also on there. Yeah, for Amy Rule. So the whole front row getting a rest. Again, kind of having some success with that rolling mall. Solid shot goes in on the Canadian captain. No, no, sorry. Oh, up, up, through the middle. Still going through the middle, it's Mena. She decides to run over the opposing fullback, and she does, quick ball. Really good defensive work, taking away the space and then putting in the tackle from the World Rugby Player of the Year. The Mats, but they've fallen off their feet, penalty to Canada. Well, she's a nuisance on defense, Rahe Demant. Creates or gives up the penalty there, but Canada can't find touch on the clearance. It's blocked, and she gets it back, so some reprieve for Julia Shaw. The mistouch options are wide. Run backwards to the referee, but now it's spilled. Yeah, no, it's not good. Nothing on there for New Zealand. We're going to hear okay. the whistle, and we do. No, going anywhere. Knock on. Just slipped out of the goodies' hands there. Yeah, back and forth possessions here. Let's go, Canada! They missed the clearance kick. But benefited to get the ball back on the bounce. Yeah, unfortunate kick from Julia Shell there, just putting her team back under pressure. Right, but sure her teammates got up way, okay, to block the kick. Nice work from them. Alex Tesse, of course, out of the Canadian effort. The stretch back. Sure, hopefully, will be back in time for WXV. And we're going to see some fresh legs for Canada. Gabrielle sent from Regina, and Castaway Wander in Canada and an extra chief in the UK. She's being relieved by Sarah Savota, the Belleville, Ontario product, also playing in the UK for the Left for Lightning. And she calls Cranford Harlequins her home team. Another famous Canadian rugby family. Crouch! Bind! Set! Scrum steady. Pops out the side. Brunt, not surprisingly, carrying the mail. Now they're going to go short side. Big subs are on the field. That is Kelly Nivali. She is a presence. But he's trying to steal it. Now the kick, a little over the top. It was spotted. There was a little bit of blocking. The referee's letting him play. Sabrina Poulain steps out of one tackle. Look at Tackle! Valjuvi brought down. And there's going to be a penalty for interfering there, so free one for the Canadians. To get says, why not? And going to have a kick. A big hit came in on her in Kaluna Valley.
So the original penalty will go to Canada. New Zealand not rolling away. Both sides have been guilty of that today. Ten minutes into the second half, but you sense the temperature's gone up a little bit. Now the Goody's going to take over the kicking duties. She misses, although it just goes into touch. I think a good decision from her. But she tried to chip in behind. Look at the treatment she got from Kalina Valley. It was a free play again for Canada, so she tries to put it through, subs. knowing if they don't get it, they will come number back six, to that penalty. They got subs. In got which they did. Well, we haven't heard Emily Tutosi's name a great deal. We knew she was going to probably have a long shift at hooker. Hang on, hang on. 20 hang on, meters subs. out. I'm just wondering. We may hang see on, her on the back of the lineup drive. More subs right, coming on, on the field. Well, great moment for Lucy Jenkins on the field for her first Black Ferns cap. Congratulations. Outstanding Super Rugby competition this year. The Canterbury product is now a Black Fern. The overthrow get cleaned up by Canada's men in. It's a good eat. Take a look at the line for a moment. Now Shell's having to go. Canada finding some return for the quick pick and go. To Goody spilled another one. But it went backwards. Total effort from both these sets of women doing the nation's Number proud. Number 10. And there all are little gaps around the breakdown, which Sophie De Goody is seeing. I mean, those screens may indeed be for her. She's a rock star, but actually they are for another nice moment for Canada. The Caledon, Ontario native, Claire Gallagher in the 22 jersey has just come on. Fancy Bermuda as a reliever. Her first cap, the Ottawa Gigi. Congratulations to her, the local university okay, water team off. member. Water off. So close. Yeah, I know. Well, some Sorry. players will go their whole career without playing at home. And oh, here good. she is in her oh, first Water's cap off. for Canada in the town she went to university, close to her hometown. Come and on. you're certain there are family and friends and university teammates in the crowd tonight supporting her. Congratulations to Claire. And on the other side, Lucy Jenkins. What a moment from her. Amazing final this year. Matatu lifted the Super Rugby Opiki Cup. So good to see the health of the women's game. All these young players putting their hands up. Big drive from Canada. They stole in the head. They have indeed. And wisely going to the short side, the rugby brain of Peltier. Smart. Quick pick. Five meters out. Canada down 14, looking to narrow the gap. Still pounding away at the line. Would it be the dream story? As Gallagher had a look at the line. Red jerseys lining up. Two meters to go to Totsi. She's short. To good, he's short. With the dive. Sarah Savota, she stopped. Inches in this one. Looked at the pass. But going over the top. Olivia de Mirchon. Who else? And the goodie saying, hey, set it down, ladies. We're right back in this. Canada's third try by the pride of New Brunswick, Olivia de Mirchon. And showing her experience. She has been so crucial to Canada up front. We mentioned how important the front row would be in these games. Inch by inch, they went forward, effort after effort. And look at Olivia de Mirchon. Even with the pause, she's able to use her little footwork to get around and over and over the line. And there's Sophie saying, let's go. She knows she's got the kick to tape, but she also needs her team still has some work to do. She's got 45 seconds on the conversion shot clock. Sophie DeGoody, hours spent training on Windsor Park in Victoria, kicking goals. Sorry, sorry, strike. And what a lift. The captain's given the team, keeping them within one score against the world champions. Well, they tried about 10 times, but finally the merchant said, I'm going to have a go. And her 55th cap, not a bad body of work in the Canadian jersey.
Long kick by New Zealand. Poulan gets it stripped. That's the experience of this New Zealand side. Again, constantly causing problems. Sylvia Brunt. But now it's New Zealand who spill it forward. And a little congratulations there for Cal Juvi. And I mentioned early on, Sarah Cal Juvi playing with a heavy heart. Lost her father just recently. And vowed to put all her frustration and disappointment in that into this match. And she's done it well. What a great leader and a player that you know well. And uh, is really proud to put on that red jersey. She's been around Canadian rugby for a long time. She's really starting to make this number 12 jersey her own. And she has showed up in this game, as you mentioned, with family on her mind. And our thoughts are with her family at this time. Big shout from New Zealand. Referee stopped it. Straight out the same tunnel. Straight out the same tunnel. Perhaps mercifully for the Canadian, Sarah Cox has said the ball's come back out the tunnel. It needs to be struck by the hooker who's in the middle of that scrum if you're new to rugby. But what a push, and I'm tunnel, probably a mental lapse from Canada. The shoot's at the same tunnel, we're just resetting it. Right there, straight. And Canada will keep field. possession here. Puritana Ho Hyatt. Awesome, thanks, mate. I'm Coming going. in the nine roll. Former basketball player. And a sevens star, so any space out there, she's going to have a go. Pelte still in there. Jersey, always scanning the field. Look at her. Bind. Set. So Canada, perhaps a bit more prepared. They're still on the back foot. The goodie has to dig in deep to get that one out. Belte says, "I'm going to put the boot to it." It's an awkward kick. Ooh, it's kept in. So not great execution from Canada there. Perhaps the moment getting to them a little bit. Well, all game, the kicks haven't been executed. They haven't gone where they need to. And once again, 30 meters from your own line, a chip to the winger might not be the best option. You've just given New Zealand territory and a good opportunity off this line out. Full six person line out for New Zealand. If anyone knows how to execute in the last 25 minutes of a game, Nice ball out the back door. Pass, a little overrun there. Options and duplicy. She's been a live wire. It's a one on one battle. They've got it out wide. Textbook finishing from the New Zealand Black Firms. Pure class. It's a scene we've seen before in this game Canada kicking away possession and New Zealand making them pay with a try. Mariangi Paul with her second of the game. And Canada's backs just struggling with the numbers and the overlaps, having to turn in and defend. Sabrina Poulin trying to trace across, but they've run out of time and space on this one. But they've given that possession to New Zealand. And these are key moments, they're getting themselves seven points back in at each time and then giving up the opportunity to go again by giving possession away. Well, what a battle. And if you're back in New Zealand watching on Sky, Ricky, Charmaine, and Honey in the studio, hope you're enjoying this. And for Canadian fans on TSN here in Canada, hope you're enjoying the Canadians giving their best against the very best in the world. Conversions pulled wide. So 12 points the difference. We really are uncompromising. As you said, New Zealand jumped on that poor execution. Went two phases and it was over. Kaljavi kicks it long. The pod goes up and it's gathered to Mayrus. Spilled momentarily from Kalanivali. Off the road. 
The scrum half, we said she likes the space. What a step off her right foot. Still going. Bohanna. But intercepted by the Canadians. Much to the right of the home fans. And guess who? Forteza getting all the way back there. He's not happy with that, offside. New Zealand player still trying to work back. Hasn't gotten offside on the quick ball. Siding break from the substitute scrum half. New Zealand couldn't turn it into points. And the third kicker for Canada. Does find touch this time. And that's great territory by Claire. Look at the step by Hohea. But Canada working back. Fabiola Forteza again with the impact. Working back. Look at the athleticism to grab that ball. Hold on to it. Mid stride. What an effort by her. For me, shades of your former teammate, Karen Peckham. Just pure determination. Always being a pain. And disrupting that burst from New Zealand. Ooh, that left is a bit early. The referee's going to have right. a reset. Let's stay on the line. Ball in quicker, please. Back it goes. We reset again. Let's make sure we're staying on line. Let's start screaming people's faces. No okay? messing with Sarah Cox. So Titosi's still in the game. We suggested she might be staying for a longer shift. And then a Toba player herself. Just came off the... Maybe that one's not straight. On the outside. Not much in it. But Crowd not happy with that, but the ball's got to go down the center. Right, let's make a decision. And something that the New Zealand women are used to is a nice partisan crowd, especially for the World Cup on home soil last year with those great scenes. Same mark. But Canada, very rare for them as a 15s team. You've had it in Vancouver as part of the World Series as a sevens player, but 15s crowds, 10,000 here celebrating. And it's great to see, and great to see them getting right in behind the women in red. In you come. There's one thing about Canadian fans, regardless of what's actually happening on the field, they will absolutely support their home team. Ponsonby hits her target, they get it wide. Mixing it up midfield, another great off though, doubling around. Beautiful work, the center's combining again, Duplessis decides to kick. It bounces up high, but not forward, and it's another try. For the fullback this time, Renee Holmes. Yeah, it was Brunt and Duplessis yeah. combining just to carve sure up the Canadian defense. Come off, not black, to put it in swing the referee just wants to make sure it's not started. off a black hand, as that was knocked forward. I think it's off a red hand, but the referee's asked to have a look. What do you see, Gislaine? I think Sarah Cox wants to make sure it wasn't a black hand here. As it gets loose, it wasn't a black hand that knocked it forward. The initial break from Brunt. I've got it off red, not black. And then the chip through. Here it is here. Perfectly weighted. It's definitely off red. It might be off. Yes. Might be off Holmes there. We'll try to let you know what they think. <laughs> the crowd is quite certain it's off Holmes. Still waiting for a call. Andrew McMillany, the Scotsman in the TMO in the truck with our crew. Yep. That was not an easy one. So I think she's gonna allow it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah, that's uh, bad news for Canadian fans. The kicker doesn't know it's been awarded. Yeah. The work, the work off the ball for Mamie Duplessis this game has been unbelievable. She's been chasing everything. The meters she's put in are building and building. Just making double sure that that's definitely no black. Kick from the sideline, hanging up, and it's good. We've checked. There's definitely no contact. So explain to the Canadians they've checked and they're comfortable that it is a try. So back we go again. 40 points up for New Zealand. Canada have some work to do in these last 17 minutes. Just wait. Well, that 
outstanding work from her today. The youngster, Sylvia Brunt. Now we could see a little dose of this from the New Zealand forwards. But they've knocked it forward. Canada had a little bit of a chance here. The midfield scrum. And with some of the sevens players lurking around this field. Poulin, Simons, Bermudez, Calgary and Paige Ferries. They can't see Canada's chances. Although Calgary is going to get a breather. And on comes Shoshana Sayumanitafa, the White Rock BC product. Very, very exciting young player. University of BC, she's impressed in the preseason games, the warm-up games. The BC Bears, so one of the few British Columbia players in this team. Let's see if Shosh can get her hands on the ball. And what a story for her. She got her first cap in 2019, gets her second cap in 2023. A credit to the work she's put in off the ball and a great first touch. That's all you ask for, the goody. With some of her fellow forwards walking a bit here. Looking for the short side. You saw the hand go out there, Peltier. Still using whole camp. Shell! It's the wrong color jersey and on her debut. Busting into open field was Lucy Jenkins. That one's gone down through Kennedy Simon. Well, it's all happening here. A great read from young Lucy Jenkins. Popular player. A bright future ahead of her. Number one red, did you say? One of the things that's happening here, and perhaps it's a, a question about the depth of the Canadian team, is that Tutosi and Hooker only just gone off, and Justine Peltier is still on the field. Two key players for Canada, but in this heat, it's good so far because you're pushing straight to keep it like that. Oh, there is Tatosi getting a breather. <laughs> McKinley Hunt on go. the field. Sweet. King City, Ontario's finest oh, yeah. little barbarian. These are awesome moments for these young women. Coco's patched up some sort of bleeding situation again. And is ready to put in the scrum here. Simons is lurking behind the scrum. We'll see if she moves into space. The goody digs it out. She shows right. Again, not great play from the captain of ice captain there. Too much indecision. Whole cap. Well gathered by Bermuda. She picked it up well. Rose puts it back in field. Off and running. Sabrina Poulain. She trips herself up. Great breakout for Canada. Poulain does well to just keep possession. But they're in New Zealand territory. Tosi's still on the field. Apologies. And she's been involved in these last two plays. The ball's held up. But Canada's moving it forward. Oh, and they've spilled it. So real energy from the Canadians, but not the result they wanted. No, it's a great break from Sabrina Poulain. Trying to push the tempo. Little inside ball from Paige Ferries. And she escapes the first tackle. And the little sidestep. Sometimes that's the, the downside of this turf. Lose your feet a little bit. Turf toe. <laughs> <laughs> but Canada trying to stay in this game. Right, let's go. Time's on. Let's warm up. Alexandria Ellis on the field. Trout. Another Ottawa native, our Haven Scottish. Lines. And an Ottawa Gigi, the local university Set. team. New Zealand put in. They're going to go short side. Drew Kennedy signing. No, She's you're moved to the eight hole. Goody trying to steal it. Was to release. Nice hands. Back up front row playing there. 
Well, then the kick through again. It's worked previously. Gulan's got a lot of ground to cover. She's on it. She backs herself. Puts it down. But, uh, what an engine on this woman. This team Pelte is still going. Playing the best team in the world and 67 minutes into it. He's passed the ball from every, the base of every breakdown. A wayward kick. Could this be costly for the Canadians? Well, Judge hitting it at the angle, coming up pace. And he rang the ball, she puts it back inside, it's gone backwards. Got a new volley. That one doesn't go to hand. And the referee's going to blow a quick whistle there, even though Canada had their hands on it. And New Zealand just really playing now, even despite 11 handling errors. We saw that last week as well. But it's a, a testament to the talent of this Blackburn side. 11 turnovers would normally, or 11 handling errors, sorry, would normally mean problems. But the amount of times they've had the ball and done something brilliant with it is far Rocks. beyond the 11 handling errors. Kendra Williams Fine. on the open side here with the captain Simon going to number eight. Reynolds. Play a plenty player, fresh legs. That's it, half gap. Oh, look at that great work from Reynolds, getting to her feet, stealing the ball, textbook jackling. Deep to see who's been superb in this match at all the right moments for the Black Ferns. Well, this is the confidence of the world champions, just pushing it through the hands. That's a greasy, wet ball. In sweaty conditions. Alex Ellis dumps her, trying to steal it. Ohio doing her job. Maya Roos still on the park. As is the Kate Henwood. Another day of plenty play. She's conceded the penalty. And it's Holkamp, I believe, who's got the ball. Sophie the Goody can <laughs> get long sidelines both sides. So she says, I'll do it down the middle instead. I don't know if it was intended. It's not a bad option. Paige Ferries is up to it. That one doesn't go to hand, so Canada gains some territory here. Loose ball still. Gathered by Renee Holmes. She's got to try to her name. Oh. Two Sorry, not to proceed. That is Kelsey Tonetti. Nice run from her. Kind of throwing their bodies in there. Sit down, says Georgia Ponsonby. Nothing on out wide. She's shown a lot of class for her young years, says Sylvia Brunt. Good decision from her there. Although Canada come in, counter attack. Ellis gets her hands on it. Maybe one last chance here for the Canadians. Ten minutes to go. Is there offside there? No, the referees let it go. Incredibly quick off the line. Canada still wanting to play, and they're creating the turnovers at the breakdown to get the possession back, but just can't seem to hold on to it. Well, we've got a time off here. Deserve it for both sets of players. Hey, ladies, you're going to have to help me out here. Number 12. Yeah, and it is going to be... Number 12, Lagongo Ipoloto Lemapu Atai Brunt. Outstanding game. What a performance. In defense, on the ball, with her footwork. Superb stuff. That's the final knock on. Right, let's go. Let's go. Oh. And there's Olivia Apps. Another local player, you know her well just then. What a moment for her. Her first cap, the Lindsay Ontario product, captain of the Sevens group. Well, she was a ball carrier <laughs> at the 2015 Pan Am Games when we played there, and here she is. She's the captain of the Sevens team and getting her debut for the women's 15s team. Trout! 
much. Congratulations to Olivia Apps and her family who are most definitely in the crowd tonight. Quite a famous family in these parts. Set. So she'll be putting in a scrum half taking over from Justine Peltier. And on the back comes Poulain. So hard. Uh oh! Guess who? Duplicy. Does she have enough gas to get there? Just short. She tries to pop it up, but it's been spilled. And a big collision. Great tracking back from the Canadians, but Duplicy has been an absolute thorn in the side of the Canadians all day. Absolutely. Fab looking for the offload, not really in control. And Duplessis, again, the work off the ball. Look at the chase. Olivia Apps is there with fresh legs, but look at Flo Simons. She's played the entire game so far. Sprints back, saves Canada. Duplessis, there's some questions asked about her defense. She worked really hard on her game. Shots! Coming out of the Super Rugby OPK. And what a result. The hard work has paid off, and she's been an immense force here. And the scrum under pressure. Degretti spins once. She's had to do that several times in the second half. A little bit tired and a little slow to get up for some of those Canadians. But again, these are all experiences that are going in the bank. We're all looking at Rugby World Cup 2025 in the UK. We're looking at WXV in Canada with the bonus point. They've secured here, They'd probably put their hand on a trip to WXV in New Zealand yeah, in November. It's, a, it's the secondary goal of this tournament. Obviously, they wanted to come in and finish first in this tournament, but eyes Shots. on the WXV. It's an opportunity for all the women's teams across Bye. the nation to get more experience, Set. more games, grow the women's game, and Canada want to be in that first tier. And apologies to correct myself. The three tries won't get that bonus point, so still up for grabs. It would be a goal of Canada in this final seven minutes to try and get over the whitewash. Even though they may not get the list, they're playing advantage for New Zealand. Short, you heard our referee. Oh, what a pass and what a finish. Amy Duplessy doing it all. Well, we've said her name so many times throughout this game. She deserves that one. Nice little line. Well, a hat trick puts your name halfway on the MasterCard player of the match. But all the rest of the work she does has surely got to have her as a leading candidate. So really, if Canada are being strategic here, no. that does not matter. With their eyes on the WX feed, they should be looking to secure a bonus point. They need a try. And they get one bonus point for four tries. And that would mean it's impossible for the USA to catch them. Well, and we have had it confirmed to be awarded after the match, the MasterCard player of the match will go to Amy Duplessis in her ninth cap. Remarkable performance from her as part of this world champion Black Firm effort. More possession for New Zealand. Quite clinical. The hours on the training pitch are paying off here. There was a scare. And they've responded. And slow was the New Zealand arrival. Ferris thought she had a steal there. I thought she might have had a fair claim. Lucy Jenkins with another strong carry. Well, in the center of all this effort was Demant. There's a steal. Olivia Apps is on it. So, right Referee asks her to release, and she does. Maya Roos ships it wide. Demand is wrapped up. A little bit static for New Zealand at the moment. 
Canada having to work from side to side here in defense. Finally, the kick comes in. Will this be an opportunity? Pushing it wide. Here's Claire Gallagher. Good quick ball from them, but New Zealand quickly off the line. Everyone still backwards from Claire Gallagher. And now New Zealand attacking through the skipper. She's put in a body of work here. To pass. Nice short ball, and Demand pops up. Who else? Right foot, left foot. Apps comes back with the tackle. It's gone backwards off a red hand, so it's play on. Just meters from the line. It's going to be a penalty against Canada. And a yellow card. She hasn't made the call yet. Never got back on set. I don't know where the ruck was that she had to be on side from. We'll have a look at it. But that is the Sinbin. I think it's Canada's captain, Sophie DeGoody, who won't take any further part in this one. There she is. Frustration, I'm sure. What an effort she's put in. Sarah Cox is deemed she was a professional foul as she's coming back, and that didn't get back on side. And she prevented a score. There we go. New Zealand scrums. <laughs> Lots of high numbers in that scrum, so they're trying to settle and Both make sure the subs do their job. But look who's in the oh, middle of all that for New Zealand. They don't always get the shout outs, but Maya Roos and Chelsea Bremner just plugging away in the engine room four and five. You don't win test matches like this without a big effort from players like that. Place in front of them. Might have a look at a pushover. No, they're going to ship it. Oh, tons of space with one short. Canada can't cover the space. And then over in the corner is Kelsey Tonetti. Was supposed to be playing at the PR Sevens competition in the U.S. Was called into the squad last week. Great moment for her. But simply executed. Canada without their captain at number eight. Just had too much space to cover on the short side. Simon's maybe coming in when she didn't need to. Kelsey Tonetti, try for New Zealand. Just watching the clock in the corner, okay? All right, yeah. Referee reminding the kicker of the minute conversion shot clock. Well, it's job done. Less than a minute to play here. Again, maybe the message has got on to Canada. Some wear and tear on that body. It's the uh, turf here. She tried to prevent it. But those black rubber balls are tough for Renee Holmes. She's still got to kick this goal, blood and all. Step to the side, and then the right leg pendulum will come through. She's having a look. Just left it out front. Won't really matter in the larger scheme of things. And as I was saying, hopefully Canada have at least the intent to try and get a try for a bonus point here. Let's go. Let's go. That one's bobbled. We're time in the is red up. numbers. Prior to the knock on. So prior to the knock-on time it was up. And that'll do it. Sarah Cox blows the whistle. And the Canadian crowd gives the women in red a big cheer. But in the end, it was a dominant performance from New Zealand. They win this one 52 points to 21.